Welcome back to About Trap. Thank you so much, everybody. If you like what you see here, remember to comment, like, and subscribe, which is Croatian for subscribe. I'm out on the river today with my friends Dave and Leslie Smith. Um, Dave is a fellow Echo Pro and his wife Leslie um, is affiliated with Snowbee and they both do things for the fly stop in San Diego. So today's video is gonna be kind of like a Euro Nymphing 201. We're gonna kind of go over some of the finer points of Euro Nymphing. So let's head to the river and uh, hopefully put some fish in the old net. All right. So back at it, like I said, we're gonna do some Euro Nymphing 201 stuff, some alt rigs, getting crazy, getting edgy with it. So Dave is fishing an Echo Shadow X, the 10 and a half foot three weight, and he's got a Euro leader on, but he's fishing a dry dropper. So let's go break down his rig. It's shallow water on the river today. A dry dropper is a great way uh, to target fish that are feeding on the surface, dry flies, and then also those mid column feeders, uh, eating emergers and things like that. What I'm using for when it's shallower water like this, I like to really use um, a long tapered leader. Uh, Honig makes a bi-colored one so you can still see it. And you can easily swap between dry dropper and uh, your nipping. That's all right, I'll just, just, we'll just let no, it run. Just leave, just leave it in, leave this in. Yeah. Let everybody see that this is how fishing is. It's not all perfect. Uh, I don't know about you, Dave, but for me, it's always perfect. I've never gotten a tangle in my life. So off of the end of this, I have a tippet ring, and then I usually do about six feet to my first fly. And I do that because I'm six feet, and this is my wingspan. So it keeps it- He's, Don't listen to this guy. He's two foot tall. Yeah, but if I wear pumps, then I get up to six feet. Got to pump it up, baby. Pump it up. And then, um, depending on how deep I want to fish, but I usually fish about 20 inches apart. So that's about 20 inches there. I'm fishing five and a half X liter today, um, but I'll usually I'll fish six, six and a half, seven on this setup. And so it allows me to easily change out that dry and go back to Euro Nymphing if I find a deeper pool. Just want to make a quick note. You see that the way Dave is casting, because he's fishing a Euro line and a Euro leader, there's not that mass there that's going to force a flex in the rod. So no, it's not sloppy casting. You've seen me do it in my videos. It's a tip cast. By stopping the rod tip at noon and forcing a flex, uh, the tip of that rod will turn over that leader. You might not get any Brad Pitt river runs through its style points, but you will catch fish. So that was a perfect example of how to fish a dry dropper on a Euro leader. We fished the shade line behind us and then Dave caught that nice brown trout uh, on a dry fly. So great way to start the day. For my dry fly Euro leader, I go six or three X on the cider to five and a half X to the first fly and then 6x to the dropper. And the reason I'm doing that is the, the river's a little bit shallower and they seem to be liking smaller flies. So I want the thinner t uh, dropper material to help get the fly down through the water column. I'm also fishing this uh, foam caddis with a bright pink dot on it. And this pink dot is great because even if the dropper pulls the dry fly through the water column and it's not floating anymore, I can still watch it underwater, and if it stops or hesitates, I can strike. So I can still fish a little bit lower than I would if I was just fishing the dry fly. Nice. <laughs> Boski. James is working from the back, from the, the near side to the back side, and then up into the quality water, which is up over there. And this way you pick up all the additional fish on the back, on the tail end, before you go and get a couple good fish out of the, the main pool. And that way that ups your uh, fish count and allows you to catch fish without spooking the fish in the pool. Little guy, but they all count. Lots of side pressure, strip down, keep them upstream. Just working near to far across the run. And that's important, just carving it piece by piece. 
So with the shallow stuff, I'm gonna land my flies and immediately get downstream, keeping my flies up and off the rocks. So land, big lead, kind of almost like a limbo bar, and then the flies will catch up with that syncrete. Keeping the cider up and off the water and get a more shallow angle of presentation. All right, Euro Nymphing 201. I'm gonna work shallow to deep, near to far. Farm tight rows, slice through the run, and then I'm gonna be very mindful of my cider. So, big lead off the bat, keeping the cider high because it's shallow. Ooh. No. Pro tip, gave you guys how not to fight a fish with a Euro rod. Um, I got excited and I put the rod high up in the air and I blew it up. It's a shame, but uh, for 40 bucks, Echo will send me a new tip and I'll be back in the game. Rest in peace, Shadow X. I'm in a pretty choice piece of water here. Again, I'm gonna fish near to far. It's about the same depth. I've talked about cider control. Um, so here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the cider just above the water and keep it because the depth is congruent throughout the whole run. Just gonna carve my way across and kind of work through in a W fashion. I snapped my uh, 11 footer, but this Echo Shadow X uh, 10 foot two weight is amazing. We're just carving tight runs using that hand retrieve. The other thing I'm doing is called a hand roll and I'm just pinching with my fingers and that's gonna slowly retrieve the slack in the system. So the reason I'm using a hand roll instead of stripping is so I get better cider control through the drift. If I strip, sometimes it'll bounce the tip. Um, using these light rods, if I just hand retrieve, I have way more contact with the flies. Another thing I want to talk about that I see a lot is people stripping through your finger. If you do this and you hook a fish, you're going to put slack in the system. By stripping through your finger, you can stay tight and you're going to get a more positive hook, up, hook set. Just drop the fish. Monster. Do it for the gram. Oh, he's out. He'll hook the fish here, car carve through the run, pick up a fish on this bank. I'm gonna keep fishing. When I work this, I'm gonna step back out on the bank, kind of like I'm mowing a lawn, and work through because there could be a fish here. And if I stay on this line and fish upstream, I'll put fish down and, and lose opportunities. So Dave just moved up, um, up just upstream of where I was, and we're continuing the trend of fishing near to far, shallow to deep really hitting this water with a, a razor blade. The thing to consider when Euro nymphing is that even by taking two steps upstream, because you're under tension, your flies will be at different depths. Was that a fish? No, I just missed that one. It's all right, Dave, we all miss fish. I'll, I'll edit that out. There it is. So by Dave just taking two steps up from where I was, his flies were at different depths. The quick release. Absolute pro level technique. <laughs> Dave's jigging the flies. We're gonna see um, if we can get a fish on an induced take. And he's just doing little wrist pops and keeping the whole thing under tension. So sometimes that movement, you can get a couple extra fish out of a run. It's a great way to fish streamers. Nymph them and jig them. It's about a 25 inch fish. Monster. <laughs> so the takeaway from that is just methodically carving through the water, angles of approach. Um, Leslie didn't drop fish like, uh, no, like myself and like Dave <laughs> did. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. I see that all the time when I'm fishing personally or guiding is everyone will kind of get to one section of the river and just plow up through the middle of the run and you're passing up opportunities at, uh, at fish. So yeah, hope that, hope that helps. I don't know if you can see it, but this is very rare. We have a, 
a wild barbecue that Dave spotted. He's actually the number one barbecue biologist from California. Yeah, so you'll notice that one, it's a, it's a calico. It's got the brown and the light brown. It is a beautiful specimen. Very, very rare, very rare. You're starting to see more Traegers come into this wilderness and push out the calicos. Just wanted to take a second to mention, you know, it's summer. Um, it's been hotter in the lower valley. We're, we're higher up on the river. We're watching our temperatures to make sure we're not gonna stress the fish. But a big part of every day that I think also maybe gets lost on people is you gotta kind of pattern the trout. So today we haven't picked up any trout in your classic transitional water, your shallow riffles where they'll push in to feed. They've all been kind of tanked up. And then on top of that, they've all been in the middle and the heads of the runs. We've tried to pick them up in the tail outs uh, with little success. Um, so having an idea of the water type that the trout are holding in for that day can really up your success. I wanna get under this obstruction. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come over my head and I'm gonna slice the tip of a rod under this underhang or overhang, science stuff, um, and we'll see if this works. If it doesn't work, you'll know because I'll get hooked in a tree. Up over my head, tip below the obstruction. I'm getting rough. So after you've gone through some drifts that you know are good, do you change flies or what's your tactic on this? So if I make great drifts like this and don't catch a fish, uh, if I'm guiding and I'm on private water, for example, I'm going to change flies, uh, maybe change depth. Usually I'll change to a louder pattern to kind of shock the fish and elicit like a more aggressive eat. Um, here, if I'm fishing public stuff and kind of having fun, I'm just gonna cut my losses and go find some dumber fish. <laughs> I've been fishing double 2.8 millimeter beads there's a more current here and I'm running 5X. So I cut off my point to put a heavier fly on to get through this column. It's not that it's, it's more dense, right? So it's gonna pull me down through these currents and these outside forces. Let's see if it works. Probably not. Positive mental attitude. The other thing to increase your sink is by throwing further casts. So it gives your flies more time to bite the slower currents on the bottom. So something else to consider uh, when you're on pieces of water is working down the column. Leslie passed through this with a dry dropper rig. So she was fishing high, um, the upper column and the mid. We're fishing lower in the column. By putting on a denser fly, it's gonna keep us anchored in the middle and the lower column. Because our heavier fly is on the point, it's gonna pull the rig straight and uh, allegedly put some fish in the net. Notice how Dave isn't sticking the rod in the air and snapping it in half. Major key. So storm's coming in, it's raining. We've changed locations. Dave just caught a whale of a fish. It kind of dwarfed the five incher that I caught. Um, but just staying true, you know, we've established a pattern. Um, we're fishing, the fish are now kind of lower in the water column. And we're really targeting just specific water types today. Um, not picking up fish everywhere, kind of in that slower, deeper runs. Um, typically summer, you know, you'll find a lot of fish in those shallower uh, riffles when they're moving up in there to feed. But we've kind of found the pattern for the day. We're repeating the process and having a lot of fun. So we have an overcast kind of day and fishing has been a little bit weird. Um, they've only been deep holes and they've been taking a lot of natural patterns. So when I'm not getting fish on the natural patterns, I like to throw something loud and aggressive, 
really big and sometimes you just get a meal they want a meal it's like seeing a giant pizza when you know you should be eating a salad you're always gonna go for the pizza wow subtle stab there my dad bod is uh <laughs> rapidly expanding nice Woo. All right, it's been an awesome day on the river. Uh, just a quick recap. Uh, when you are considering bead size, it's gonna be impacted by the current, by the thickness of your tippet and the thickness of your leader, especially at distance. So look for beads with more mass if you're fishing in heavier water, if you're fishing in more complex currents, if you're fishing more at distance, something to keep in mind. Also angles of approach, working shallow to deep, near to far, really chiseling through the run. And then lastly, just kind of patterning the fish. Today we found all of our fish in deep buckets from the middle to the head. What I mean by a bucket is just kind of a broad, deep depression. Just wanna give a thanks to Dave behind me and Leslie for a fun day fishing together. I'll leave their information, their Instagram pages below. Give them a follow. Uh, they fish all around California, some really good content. And uh, if you want to, uh, fish this. Like I said, I'll drop Conejos River Anglers information down below, or if you want a day private, book me and I'll leave my website as well. Thank you guys so much. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.